Ugh. Hey folks, Carrie here from Royal LePage Rights Race Realty. And whether you're a buyer or a seller, if you're thinking real estate, at some point you're going to be dealing with a property inspection. Let's talk about that today. Now, as a buyer, once you get an accepted offer on a property, hopefully you will have put in a condition to have a satisfactory property inspection in order to reduce the risk of those those unwanted surprises in the property that you love so much and that you want to purchase. You've done the showings, you love the home, you've seen everything, but a satisfactory property inspection allows you to look at a deeper dive into what's going on with that home to make sure that everything that you can't see is up to snuff and not going to cost you major dollars later. If you're the seller, you may want to consider doing a pre-sale home inspection. This will give you a reality check on your property, kind of a report card, so to speak, and it will allow you to fix some of those small deficiencies. And if there's any big ones, we want to find out about those because that can reduce to price reductions or the buyer walking away from your sale when you're excited to be moving on to something else. Now, in the interest of getting a reality check and a report card completed on my home, I decided to get a property inspection completed on it. And there's many inspectors in our area that are awesome. And they come and they give an extensive report and they do a walkthrough and a discussion and walk you through your property to let you know, point out things, where your deficiencies might be, what things are great, what things are bad, what things could be improved on, and perhaps some deficiencies that you should look after before considering selling your property. Let's have a look at what I discovered and what I did to fix those problems. Now, as I mentioned, this is an extensive report, so let's look at some of the things that are covered. The inspector will look at the exterior of your home, check out the grading and the foundation, and make sure that the rainwater and snow melt is not going to be melting against your house or providing extra water that's going to cause an issue. They'll also look at walkways, driveways, unistone cement, and look at the condition of that. Mm -hmm. Moving on to decks, railings, fencing, making sure that those things are in good working condition as well. Then, of course, we have the roof of your home. They'll look at the age of the shingles and the condition to see whether, whether your roof needs to be budgeted for a new one or a replacement at some point soon. With the roof, there will be eaves troughing, downspouts, venting, skylights, or anything that's attached to your roof that may need to have a, a closer look to make sure that they're done properly and in good working condition. We can't forget the windows and doors around your home. Make sure that they're that they're properly installed and working correctly. If you have rock work or siding or stucco, of course, the inspector will look at that as well and provide some details as to whether it's in good condition or not. We can't forget the outdoor water taps. Are they frost free? Do we need some maintenance on those? And then we have the receptacles that are outside. They should be GFCI and they should be covered. If you have a detached garage, the inspector will have a peek in there as well and make sure that things are done correctly and in good working condition. They'll also look in the attic of the garage to see how much R value you have for your insulation and whether that should be topped up. Mine definitely needed some. There are access holes in your garage and your home for access to your attic. Mine were lacking some weather stripping and insulation. So that was a deficiency that the inspector pointed out to me as well. They'll also do some thermal imaging to check out any hot or cold spots to see if there's an issue there. And if you have a sump pump, check out to make sure that it's working correctly and if everything is functioning properly. Of course, they will have a look at your current electrical system and make sure that everything is up to snuff in that category as well. Then let's move on to the plumbing. Vents need to be a certain height. And of course, your hot water tank and your plumbing system, you'll have a look at make sure that the weekend warrior didn't install things incorrectly. My hot water tank was getting near the age that it needed to be replaced, so I've looked after that. Moving on, then the inspector will have a good look at your HVAC system, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and make sure everything is in good working order there. Then we move on to every single room in the house, which will include a little report card for each room showing what's acceptable, marginal, um, not present, and what's in repair and needs to be looked after. So the inspector will go through every, every room and provide that information for each one. 
This will include all of the washrooms in the property. And our ensuite actually had a faulty tap, so we needed to get that looked after. Now, our place does not have a wood burning fireplace. So if it did, I would recommend that we get a wet inspection, wood energy technology transfer. And that's when the inspector does a once over a deep dive into your, your fireplace and make sure it's gonna meet the code for your insurance company and safety for your family. Also, we live in town, but if this was an acreage, we would probably want to do an inspection, make sure that things are good for our septic system, tank, field, or pump out, as well as our water well. Make sure the pump and all of that that's related to your most important source, which is water, and make sure that it is awesome for your property. Okay, my inspection is now complete, and there's a few deficiencies I need to deal with, or not. If you choose not to, talk to your realtor about what needs to be disclosed uh, with some of these problems because you're aware of them now and it may affect uh, the future purchase for another family. I chose to fix some of these things and I'm going to show you exactly what I did to do that. Have a look. For the exterior receptacles, they were not GFCI and they weren't covered. So I've fixed that issue so that the next owner won't have to worry about them. In our laundry room, I had the old ribbed venting, which was combustible and a lint collector, which basically could cause a fire. So I've changed that over to a hard vent pipe now. My hot water tank was getting pretty old. So I decided, you know what, this is a good time to update. And we actually went with a bigger tank and put a tray underneath it in case there is a possible leak. Then we move on to the venting upstairs. I had one vent that was pretty short and just in terms of snow cover on the roof, it might be filled in. So I've added some extra pipe there to lengthen that. And I did that myself to make sure that it was done with the advice from a contractor. Moving into our garage with the insulation, we were light on the insulation, so I've blown in some extra insulation and I added some insulation to both the house and the garage access doors. So now what? I've looked after all of these deficiencies and if we were about to sell our home, I would probably leave that on the kitchen table so for any prospective buyers that are walking through can flip through it, see the deficiencies that there were and that they've been looked after. Plus, I feel better about the report cut on my home that I'm living in a nice, safe property. Anyways, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions at all, reach out to us at the right team. We're happy to help. Have an awesome day.